directly from KSAT 12. The Night Beat starts right now. We begin tonight with late breaking news. Four people in the hospital tonight after being shot in what San Antonio police say was some sort of a shootout that took place over on the east side. Those first calls to police happened on Mid Crown, where Jaffney Gray is right now. Jaffney, we're learning there were two separate locations involved. Yes, that's right. The first incident happened right in the yard of that home that you see there. However, San Antonio police say while they were responding to a shooting at this location, they later discovered two people down the street with gunshot wounds on Whitcraft. Now, police say a husband and wife were in their yard where witnesses were also. They say a car pulled up and a woman and man got out. Some kind of argument broke out, leading to the woman and man allegedly firing shots at the couple. The husband hit in the back in serious condition while the wife hit also both taken to Sam seat. Shortly later, police discovered that that man and woman who eventually drove off were found on Woodcraft with gunshots. They were taken to university. That led police to believe that this shooting and those injuries were related. They say perhaps someone in the yard fired back at the two people before they drove off. Now, police say the two at University Hospital they're recovering right now are potential suspects, while they say that the husband and wife who are recovering at Sam C are potential victims. This, of course, is still an ongoing investigation. Tim, Courtney. Jeff and Gray reporting live for us tonight. A warrior who exemplified selfless service. That is the way San Antonio native Sergeant Javier Gutierrez is being remembered by the country he valiantly served for over a decade. He was killed during an attack in Afghanistan just yesterday. Our Jaffney Gray with the successful military footprint Gutierrez leaves behind right here in Military City, USA. Thank you for your service and ultimate sacrifice. Rest in peace, warrior. We will see you again or until Valhalla. These are just a few words of respect coming from you in our community for 28-year-old Sergeant First Class Javier J. Gutierrez, a decorated U.S. Army soldier who was killed during a combat mission in an eastern province in Afghanistan. There, the U.S. military said, quote, an individual in an Afghan uniform opened fire on the combined U.S. and Afghan force with a machine gun Saturday, end quote. Gutierrez, along with 28-year-old Sergeant Antonio Ray Rodriguez, were killed. Six others were wounded. The 7th Special Forces Group Commander said Gutierrez was committed to the mission and added, quote, Our priority now is to take care of his family and teammates. We will provide the best possible care possible during these trying times. Army officials say Gutierrez enlisted in the Army in 2009 as an infantryman and was assigned the 2nd Battalion 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment. He graduated in 2015 as a Special Forces Communications Sergeant and was reassigned to the 3rd Battalion 7th Special Forces Group at the Elgin Air Force Base in Florida. A highly decorated soldier who sacrificed it all for the United States of America. That was Jaffney Gray reporting. Other top stories tonight. The closure of Noah's event venue in Selma continues to impact those who use that space. Now members of a church say they're left without a place to worship. Livingstone Church had used the space for almost five years, but now they're searching for a new home. The night team Stephen Cavazos now with how they plan to move forward. What? It's like our church, the place where we go every single week. We can't go there anymore. Members of the Livingstone Church left in disbelief and without a place to worship after the venue they used for service filed for bankruptcy. Somebody had posted something on Facebook and I saw it and I was like, whoa, this can't be real. The church now searching for a place to gather. Tonight, that was at Revolution Church after Noah's event venue closed all their locations across the country, something that left thousands frustrated and demanding answers. There was an, an initial like, oh, that's kind of, oh, what are we going to do? But we are honored to get to come together however, wherever, that with your people as one. But these members say they're leaning on their faith in an uncertain future. We know really that God is going to provide our next home, our next location. Senior Pastor Landon Kiker says that's already in the works. Kiker hoping to find a permanent home for the congregation. And with the venue closing, he says the timing is just right. Now that this has happened, they're like, well, we were already looking ahead to the future anyhow. Despite losing their space, Kiker says members of the church have stayed optimistic. Uh, the church, I don't think I've ever seen our church more unified than it is now. And he says that's the purpose of why they come together. We don't exist to build buildings, we exist to build people. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look at other top stories this Sunday evening. A 16 year old girl was shot and killed in New Braunfels last night. The victim has been identified by police as Gabrielle Barrera, who was found dead with a gunshot wound in the 600 block of Sumner Circle. 
Police have taken her brother, 17-year-old Zachary Barrera, into custody. He's been charged with first-degree murder and is in the custody at uh, Comal County Jail. His bond set at $250,000. Meanwhile, that shooting remains under investigation. San Antonio police looking for two suspects accused of shooting a woman twice while she was walking down the street early this morning. It happened on the city's east side on North High Road around 2.30 a.m. The woman told police she was walking down the street trying to get to her husband's workplace when the suspects pulled over in a silver vehicle, pointed a gun and shot. She was hit in the lower back and ankle and eventually transported to the hospital in serious condition. The victim told police that she has never seen either of the two men before. A man is dead tonight after crashing his vehicle into a highway wall divider early this morning. It happened on Highway 90. Police say the man was speeding while trying to exit on Zarzamora Street just before 4 a.m. He hit the wall head on and was pronounced dead at the scene. Westbound lanes of Highway 90 had to be shut down for a couple of hours. No other injuries were reported. Police say a 16 year old was riding his bike when he was hit by an SUV. They say the team was riding along Glen Avenue and Bordeaux when he was struck. The woman driving told police she didn't see the boy, but she did stop to help. The teen was taken to the hospital in serious but stable condition. No charges are expected. And San Antonio police say a man is lucky to be alive after being hit by a train this morning. It all happened over on West Ashby Street. Police say the man was walking on those tracks when the train passed by and sideswiped him. A train stopped and emergency crews were called to the scene. That man taken to a hospital where he is now recovering. Workplace equality. The nonprofit human rights campaign just released its annual study, which grades companies across the nation on their level of inclusion for LGBTQ employees. Two San Antonio companies received perfect scores this year, Ratspace and USAA. USAA invited us to examine what they're doing that stood out in the extensive study. That story, part of our series, South Texas Pride. This was a big year for Bobby and Jeff. They just celebrated their daughter Evelyn's first birthday. She's walking, she's talking, we love her to death. They always wanted to start a family, but were waiting for the right time and circumstances. We were both in the Army at the same time, and then we were in school. We were both working at the university at the same time, mm -hmm. um, and then now we're both here at USA at the same time. So we've kind of had a shared experience with regard to like the levels of diversity and inclusion. Finding that inclusion was a journey for them. And I think both of us experienced the outcome of that before don't ask don't tell was repealed and how you have to segment yourself right so you have to compartmentalize your personal life from your professional life their timing for adopting evelyn had a lot to do with the inclusive benefits they found at usaa three months each we'd be able to take off to spend time with evelyn and bond with her um, they offered us the adoption benefit as well um, that and just coupled with the the inclusive environment the nonprofit Human Rights Campaign puts together an annual corporate equality index. It uses a list of criteria to rate companies on inclusivity. Benefits are on that list, as is training. We're not asking you to agree with the sexual orientation. We're asking you to understand it and respect it in the workplace. But USAA Chief Diversity and Inclusion Officer Jason Camilla says that effort extends far beyond the company's basic training. Diversity is about differences. Inclusion is more about how the individual feels, welcome, belonging. In 2015, Camilla helped launch one of the company's eight diversity and inclusion groups. The group called BOLD supports the LGBT workforce. So to have people that are not or don't know enough about the LGBT community to engage with them, to learn about their about their stories. Just knowing that there's power in numbers and like having a group that you, you could turn to if you if you needed to, I think that's that's really great. It's something probably a lot of LGBT people never kind of dreamed of and it's great now you can just be you and focus on the work that you do. At Evelyn's birthday party, Bobby and Jeff were surrounded by coworkers whose love and support have allowed them to live the life they'd always dreamed of. Good for them. If you want to check out this year's annual corporate equality index, we have the link on our website. Just head to ksat.com and look for this story. In less than 36 hours, KSAT will be releasing the results of the first public poll of Bear County voters in more than 20 years. City and elected county elected officials ranking important issues, even what people think of the agencies and companies that are supposed to serve us will be part of this first poll. More than 600 Bear County likely voters were polled over the last few days to weigh in. The Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll will be conducted four times this year. Next Tuesday is the first poll release. 
Aquifer protection, public transportation, and pre-K for SA will be asked about. So will the mayor, the county judge, and the county sheriff. From there, we will follow where the data takes us. Let's go in and find out the results. What do people really believe are the most important issues facing the city? And I think with Bear Facts, with KSAT, with the Rivard Report combination, we've got a great opportunity to get out there and have a data-driven result on what is the most important thing facing the city. There's even an open-ended question where we ask what they think is the most important issue facing Bear County. The Bear Facts KSAT Rivard Report poll will be released on Tuesday. KSAT will be live streaming a poll reveal show at 2.30 on Tuesday afternoon. KSAT Steve Spreester will talk to members of the Bear Facts Brain Trust and local policymakers about the results during that hour-long streaming special on KSAT.com and BearFacts.org. Looking outside with live cam tonight, we are still in the low 70s, folks. It is warm and it is soupy outside. No rain right now in San Antonio, but uh, off to the north, north of town, there have been some spotty showers detected this evening over the next several hours. And through early tomorrow morning, we'll see more widespread fog and drizzle develop. And as you're getting everyone out the door, out to the bus stop tomorrow morning, there will be another chance of some isolated showers, a 40% chance of some light rain through early tomorrow morning. So it's going to be a pretty messy commute tomorrow. You may want to go ahead, plan ahead and give yourself a little bit of extra time to not only get everyone out the door, but also give yourself a little bit of extra time on the roads because the combo of fog, drizzle and rain will probably cause some slowdowns. We do have a front coming through tomorrow and rain chances continue for a few more days. All the details, what you need to know for the week ahead are coming up in the full forecast. Still ahead on the night beat, a gunman opens fire inside a New York City police precinct. Why authorities believe this wasn't the alleged shooter's first violent act against police. Plus, the number of deaths related to the coronavirus now passing the SARS epidemic. We'll break down the latest numbers and update you on efforts to combat the virus right here at home. But for some of the biggest, most talked about moments from Hollywood's biggest night, a look at tonight's Oscar ceremony right after the break. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Oh, it's been a long night. That's because the 92nd Annual Academy Awards just wrapped up. <laughs> Among the big winners, Joaquin Phoenix, Renee Zellweger, and the movie Parasite. Here's ABC's Marcy Gonzalez with a look at Hollywood's biggest night. The 92nd Academy Awards kicking off with some serious star power. We both have hosted the Oscars before, and this is such an incredible demotion. <laughs> they don't really have hosts anymore. Why is that? Twitter! The first category of the night packed with Hollywood heavyweights. And the Oscar goes to... Brad Pitt. Sending Brad Pitt home with his first acting Oscar ever. They told me I only have 45 seconds up here, which is 45 seconds more than the Senate gave John Bolton this week. The night filled with some political moments as well as powerhouse performances. And an all-out celebration of the best of the best in film this year. Laura Dern winning her very first Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. Thank you all for this gift. This is the best birthday present ever. And the show closing out with the biggest awards of the night. And the Oscar goes to Joaquin Phoenix Joker. I've been a scoundrel in my life. I've been selfish. I've been cruel at times, hard to work with, and ungrateful, but so many of you in this room have given me a second chance. And the Oscar goes to Renee Zellweger. Cynthia, Scarlett, Charlize, Saoirse, I have to say, boy, it is an honor to be considered in your company. And with the grand finale of award season now over, the next stop for the stars right upstairs at the Governor's Ball. And you can probably hear behind me, they are wasting no time here, already breaking down the red carpet. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Hollywood.
Well, we got on a little late. That means we're closer to rain time. <laughs> yeah. yes, the so Oscars owes me 35 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but the oh, rain is coming. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> really, really exciting. We still need some good rain here. Yeah. And, uh, it looks like Tuesday night into Wednesday morning will be our best window uh, for some heavier rain. But even tomorrow, we're going to have some scattered showers and storms out there. And this does kick off a three-day stretch of rain chances. It is really warm out there. It is still 77 in Laredo, 72 Gonzales, uh, still near 70 degrees up in the hill country. Our dew points are high as well. Some spots in the low 70s off to the east of 35. A dew point of 67 here in San Antonio. What does this all mean? It is way too warm and way too humid out there tonight. Uh, definitely soupy uh, on this Sunday night. Visibility is OK. Uh, these numbers are starting to fall a bit off to the east of 35. But right now, visibility is just fine. But through early tomorrow morning, we are looking at some more patchy, dense fog settling in throughout the area. So that's one thing you will have to contend with tomorrow morning on the commute. The fog will also have some drizzle and some isolated light showers around. I want to give you a look at the day tomorrow, starting off a gray and pretty messy in the morning for the commute. We're not going to cool down much more than where we are right now because we stay cloudy. Humidity stays high. That just doesn't allow for temperatures to drop off very much. I think we'll see our warmest part of the day late morning early, early afternoon before a front moves through. This will bring in some cooler air, so we'll be upper 60s, low 70s midday. By the afternoon, we're in the low 60s, falling into the 50s tomorrow evening. So some cooler air will be moving in. We'll also see breezy north northeast winds kick in during the second part of the day tomorrow. Some scattered showers and non severe thunderstorms will be possible late morning into early to mid afternoon as that frontal boundary is moving on through rain wise right now. Not a whole lot to see out there. We did have a nice little downpour kind of right skirt up 281 there from uh, Stone Oak up to Timberwood Park, Bull Verde. Uh, but other than that, it's been pretty quiet across San Antonio and Bear County this evening. But there are some very spotty, isolated showers out there. Uh, some more shower activity is off closer to the Houston area. But as we get a wider view, there are some showers and thunderstorms up in the far northern and eastern portion of Texas. And there's the front that gets here tomorrow. It's working through uh, North Texas, kind of right around the I-20 corner. Corridor. As we speak, we've got upper 50s at the Metroplex, 52 in Abilene, 40s and 30s. Well behind that front up in North Texas, so there is some cooler air behind that front and it will be filtering into South Texas and San Antonio, as I mentioned during the day tomorrow. So taking you into tomorrow afternoon after a messy morning, things are going to stay gray as this front moves through. Sometimes when we get these cold fronts, we clear out right away. That is not the case this time. We're going to have overrunning in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere, which means the cloud cover, the moisture is going to continue continue to stream in overhead of the cooler air that settles in tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. So even as we get into Tuesday, it's going to be a cold start to the day in the 40s with cloudy skies, more drizzle and isolated showers possible. Tuesday, we're looking at scattered light rain continuing through the course of the day, but it's going to be Tuesday night into very early Wednesday morning. Then we see kind of the bulk of the upper level energy move in overhead, and that gives us our best chance at some widespread showers and storms. There certainly could be a few rumbles of thunder here, some heavy rain, maybe even some small hail, but we're not looking at a big widespread concern for severe weather, but this will just be some nice beneficial rainfall falling over parts of South Texas. Higher rainfall totals will be off in far northeast Texas. Some of our northeastern counties along and east of 35 could see maybe a little bit more than two inches of rain here in and around San Antonio. I'm thinking between one and two inches of rain from tomorrow all the way to Wednesday night, and we will certainly take that. That's for sure, but it's going to be pretty uh, cool and damp out there for the next few days, so be ready for that, but we improve big time. I'm just in time for Valentine's Day. No wet, soggy date nights. No, <laughs> not at all. Thanks, Katie. We'll be back right after this. The Spurs have started off their rodeo road trip on a four game losing streak and are now officially in danger of missing the playoffs for the first time in 22 seasons. Scary stuff. Let's check in with our Greg Simmons for more. What's on instant review? Yeah, it's not looking good. It just keeps getting worse and worse yeah. as they go along. And the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans seasons. Coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Right back to Harrison Barnes. Rosen's got to be a little careful. He's got four fouls. Barnes spots Giles for an and one.
The Spurs dropped their fourth game on a road. It's about the rodeo road trip last night, getting blown out in the second half against the Kings in Sacramento, a game the Spurs should have won, given the fact the Kings are having a worse season than the Spurs until last night. What went wrong, we will show you. We'll get you ready for the Spurs' next two games before the All-Star break against the Denver Nuggets and the Oklahoma City Thunder. What was the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes down to both the Dallas Cowboys and the Houston Texans going into next season? The Cowboys have a new head coach, and can they sign all of their free agents, including Dak, who wants a contract that matches Russell Wilson's at $35 billion a season. And did the Texans make the right decision in making head coach Bill O'Brien also the general manager after their colossal collapse against the Kansas City Chiefs in the playoffs? He's got two field goals in the first half, and all the scoring for Dallas comes off the leg of the former Kentucky Wildcat. Well, the Dallas XFL team didn't sound much different from the NFL one. The new XFL made its re-debut this weekend. What did you think? The Rampage had been sold. And they are leaving San Antonio. What does that mean for the future of sports in San Antonio? The sports guys are back tonight with their opinions. All that plus bull riding is back at the San Antonio Rodeo. And should the Dallas Cowboys make a play for Tom Brady or stick with Dak Prescott and a new contract? Tonight, you decide. Instant Replay is live, and it's after the night beats. Whenever that might end. That, hopefully <laughs> soon, right? <laughs> Thanks, Greg. See you in just a bit. Sure. Coming up next on the night beat, gunfire from inside a New York City police precinct. What happened leading up to it and what happened afterwards? Plus, the latest on the coronavirus and the efforts underway to combat the virus here at home. A pair of police shootings stunning the Big Apple today. Yeah, just this morning, a man walking into a police precinct in the Bronx and opening fire just hours after another officer was shot inside his police van. ABC Zachary Keish with the remarkable tale of survival and who police believe is responsible. Two police shootings less than 12 hours apart. Around 8 this morning, the NYPD says a man walked into the 41st precinct in the Bronx, pulled out a gun, and unleashed several rounds at point-blank range. This was an attempt to assassinate police officers. We need to use that word. An NYPD lieutenant shot in the arm was rushed to a nearby hospital. Police say the suspect was taken into custody after running out of bullets and laying down. It is only by the grace of God and the heroic actions of those inside the building that took him into custody, that we are not talking about police officers murdered inside a New York City police precinct. Police believe that man, Robert Williams, is the same person who approached a marked police van Saturday night, also in the Bronx. Police say he asked for directions, then opened fire, shooting an officer in the neck. Nine That officer survived and was released from the hospital this morning. Police say the suspect is a career criminal with a violent past. Williams was paroled in 2017 after nearly 20 years behind bars for attempted murder. Mayor de Blasio says he's grateful he's off the streets. These officers handled such a horrific situation with heroism, with extraordinary skill. Thank God that each and every one of them will be okay. Zachary Keish, ABC News, New York. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. Health officials confirming today that more than 800 people have died. That number now surpassing the SARS pandemic in the early 2000s. The virus has spread to more than 37,000 people, leading authorities to tighten travel even more out of China. This also means a number of ships have had to quarantine their passengers, including a cruise ship currently docked in Japan, carrying a couple spending their honeymoon under a lock and key. I'm definitely going to say, like, if we work together, do we probably yeah, get a little crazy? Just imagine, like, a knot in your stomach mm -hmm. all day, every day. Meanwhile, the city of Wuhan still at the center of the crisis. Medical workers in hazmat suits having to attend to patients while crews convert a convention center into a field hospital. It was in Wuhan where the first American died from the virus. Here at home. And here at home, San Antonio says it is monitoring, res monitoring residents who've traveled back home from China. While the city did not reveal exact numbers, it says those people are now under a 14-day self-quarantine at their homes. As of today, Bear County has no reports of anyone being diagnosed with the virus. There are 12 confirmed cases in the United States. By contrast, the CDC confirms between 19 and 26 million flu illnesses nationwide, at least 10,000 which have ended in death. Taking a look at other stories around America tonight. Police are looking for possible suspects in a deadly shooting at a nightclub 
in Ohio that happened overnight. Officers in Youngstown, which is southeast of Cleveland, say three people were killed at the Brothers of Power Classic Cars Club. All three victims were men in their 30s. At least one man was found shot to death in a car. Police say they have one suspect in custody tonight, but aren't sure if more are involved. In Chicago, 15 people walk away unharmed after a wrong way driver crashed into the bus they were riding. It happened Friday night. Police say a stolen Honda minivan was sitting at a gas station before it pulled out, driving the wrong way on a one way street, attempting to make a U turn. It crashed into a city bus, but right before surveillance video from a nearby business shows two people jumping out of the moving vehicle. That happens just before it makes impact. One person stumbles away and the other can be seen making a run for it. All of the people on the bus were transported for treatment, but are going to be fine. Nobody has been arrested for the crash. A Florida man has been accused of threatening to assassinate President Donald Trump. Police arrested 25-year-old Roger Hedgepeth yesterday outside the White House. He reportedly approached a U.S. Secret Service police officer on patrol and said, quote, I'm here to assassinate President Donald Trump, end quote. He then told the officer he planned to do it with a knife, which the Secret Service officer confiscated after a pat-down pat search. The Secret Service says the suspect was a critically missing, endangered person as well as a mental health patient. Hedgepeth was moved to a hospital for a mental evaluation. New safety concerns for Boeing, this time surrounding the company's Starliner spacecraft. The Starliner is designed to carry NASA astronauts to the International Space Station, but it's encountered a second, previously undisclosed, software issue. During a test flight back in December, a clock issue caused the spacecraft to misfire and stumble off course. But now a safety panel says a separate software problem could have caused a catastrophic failure when the crew cabin separated from the module. NASA says it's too soon to say if another uncrewed flight will be needed to deem the vehicle ready to fly astronauts. An update now on the proposed wall to be built at the U.S.-Mexico border. The White House is reportedly set to ask Congress for less border wall funding. A budget proposed expected to a proposal expected to be released this week only asked for $2 billion for the construction of that wall. This comes after the White House asked for $5 billion last year, which it did not get from Congress. Funding for the border wall has been a major sticking point between the Trump administration and Congress. Back in 2018, President Donald Trump allowed the government to shut down for a historically long impasse, which did not yield the requested money. Hope you've had a great weekend as we look outside with live cam. We're going to see fog and drizzle settle back in the evening along with a chance of some showers. That'll make for a messy start to the new work and school week tomorrow. And I want to give you a glance at what your week looks like here tomorrow. Another fairly warm day to start 70 around lunchtime and then our temperatures will drop off during the second half of the day. Chances of showers and storms tomorrow and Tuesday and Wednesday before we see some improvement as we get closer to Valentine's Day at the end of the week. We'll talk more about these rain chances in detail coming up in the full forecast. Courtney. Thank you, Katie. Still ahead, despite their name, waffle irons are not just for making waffles. A slew of new recipes you can try. That's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. What's old is new again. Dust off that old iron waffle, old waffle iron rather. Or maybe you need a new one. Maybe you need a new anchor. Uh, waffle makers aren't just for breakfast anymore. Seems they are the cool kitchen gadgets today. People are using them to make everything from breakfast to burgers. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It shows us which ones work the best in this waffle test. 12 year old Evan is making brownies and get this, a waffle maker. I think it cooks them better because it has the indents and also they're just more fun to eat, I think. Seems waffle makers are hot. Home cooks are waffling everything now from hash browns to grilled cheese to puff pastry. To help you get in on the trend, Consumer Reports tested eight waffle makers for how well they turn out perfectly browned waffles and for how clear the controls are. Some of the things we flag are uneven browning at the top or bottom of the waffles, narrow crevices on the grid that might be hard to clean, or handles that get really hot to the touch. So here are three they recommend. 
On the high end, there's the Breville Smart 4 Slicer. It's $250. It has several browning settings, it's easy to use, and beeps when your waffle is done. This Calphalon only cooks two at a time, but it's less than half the price. It did a good job browning, has a countdown timer, and can turn on its side for storage. If you're on a budget, Consumer Reports named this Chefman a Best Buy. It's $30. It cooks one waffle at a time. The handle does get hot, so you have to use a mitt. It also stores easily. All three waffle makers have moats to catch drips. By the way, experts say the key to great waffles or brownies is to preheat. They're really good. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. A local science class named a finalist in a nationwide science contest. A closer look at their invention after the break. Mario Kart taught us that really the only good use for a banana peel is to throw it behind you and knock your opponents out of the race. Well, there's a group of high school girls here at the Young Woman's Leadership Academy that's taking the banana peel and turning it into something useful and helpful for our planet. We basically started this project doing a lot of research, seeing how, how can we use some natural substance to make a plastic. Um, we found banana peels um, based on other projects that we had seen, but also these banana peels actually work because they have a lot of starch in them. And so basically what we're doing in this project is using the starch in the banana peels and then um, adding chemicals to kind of um, plasticize it so it's like a polymer that we can manipulate and turn into different objects that would be useful to us. The girls submitted their invention to the nationwide Samsung Solve for Tomorrow contest and were chosen as one of the five finalists for the state of Texas. As a state winner, we get $15,000 in technology for the school. The main price is $100,000 in technology, which is huge to our school. So the girls here at Young Women's Leadership Academy will keep working on this project through the end of February, and then it will be submitted to the contest. We will, of course, keep you updated on the results. For more Blake's Brainiacs, head to KSAT.com. Katie Blake, KSAT 12 News. Girl power, gotta love it. Yeah, They're no kidding. So smart and, mm -hmm. smart and such well spoken young ladies. I really enjoyed chatting with them for a little bit, but they were working hard. They were taking apart appliances like toasters and blenders yeah. to try to see what parts they could use for their invention with the banana peel. It's really cool. Thank goodness Very this neat. generation really thinking forward. And we used to get in trouble for taking stuff apart. <laughs> right? Now it's encouraged. <laughs> Doing good for the planet, too. Yes, yes. Well done. Yeah, love to see those girls. Uh, we've got some good news in the forecast department. Rain chances over the next few days. And things will start to change. Uh, I mean, First thing tomorrow, uh, we've got two factors at play here. One is a cold front that has moved through the I-20 corridor this evening. It's really already through the Metroplex. It's through Abilene and temperatures there are falling into the 50s now. That front will arrive here tomorrow right around midday and begin to drop our temperatures. We've also got some upper level energy and upper level low that is building off on the West Coast as we speak tonight. Uh, so we've got the cold air at the surface moving in tomorrow. That's going to stay put because this upper level low off on the West Coast will kind of slide across Texas tomorrow night, Tuesday into Wednesday. That's going to keep cloud cover and rain chances in the forecast. So we're going to get some cooler air in here and over top of it, cloudy skies and chances of rain. But this is good news for our dry ground here in South Texas. Scattered showers tomorrow with the arrival of that frontal boundary. Some scattered light rain continues into Tuesday and then some more widespread shower and thunderstorm activity very late Tuesday night into Wednesday before things clear out. Things will be beautiful as we get into Thursday and Friday before the next three days or so here in San Antonio uh, and surrounding counties. One to two inches of rain possible and we will definitely take that. That is for sure. It's very warm out there right now. 72 in San Antonio, 73 in Carrizo Springs. We've also got very elevated dew point temperatures, so not a huge spread between our air temperatures and our dew points. So humidity is high and that's a good setup for some fog to develop through tomorrow morning and I do expect fog and drizzle to develop pretty widespread across the area through rush hour tomorrow morning. So that's one thing you will have to contend with out on the roads in the morning. Uh, there will be that drizzle, that really light rain, but there could also be a couple of uh, scattered showers that will produce rain slightly heavier than that. So overall, just a messy commute tomorrow morning. Here comes that cold front arriving in San Antonio right around midday or so. So tomorrow we'll see our temperatures peak late morning, very early in the afternoon, and then fall off through the afternoon hours as some cooler air filters in. That frontal boundary 
Saturday along with a little bit of lift from that approaching upper level low will result in some scattered showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. Best chance to hear a few rumbles of thunder here in San Antonio will be late morning, early afternoon. There's not a concern for severe weather, but there could certainly be some heavy rain, some flashes of lightning, maybe even some very small hail, but nothing that's um, going to cause really any issues at all. We get into Tuesday. That cooler air is settling in. We'll be in the 40s Tuesday morning, but look, we're still cloudy and we've still got chances of light scattered rain in the forecast as that system from the west continues to get closer and closer. So Tuesday will be a cold, damp day. Rain chances continue into Tuesday night and Wednesday. I'm stopping this at 3 a.m. Wednesday morning because as the bulk of that upper level energy moves in overhead, that gives us our best chance at some widespread rain. There certainly could be some stronger storms within this line that this forecast model is painting overnight Tuesday into early Wednesday. But again, no huge concern for severe weather. I think we're just going to see some nice heavy rain that will move in and really help us out with our ongoing drought situation. So a few days ahead, it's going to be pretty messy, but we'll keep you updated, of course. Tonight, only down to 67 showers, fog and drizzle. Here's your day tomorrow, warmest part of the day, right around midday or so. Then that front comes through, drops our temperatures into the afternoon and evening, and things stay pretty chilly friends Tuesday into Wednesday. High temperatures only in the 50s, but some nice improvement in the return of sunshine by Valentine's Day. We'll be right back. Jumanji The Next Level took in five and a half million dollars for another fifth place finish and a domestic total of 298 million. Doolittle dropped to number four, earning 6.7 million dollars. 1917 and its 10 Oscar nominations took third place on ticket sales of nine million dollars. All the towns are no-go. That's why you got people here. Dangerous people. We're dangerous people. After three weekends on top, Bad Boys for Life fell to second, grossing $12 million for a domestic total of $166 million. Silence. Birds of Prey and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn easily debuted on top, though its opening weekend total of $33.3 million was considerably lower than expected. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The San Antonio Rampage are playing their final season in San Antonio after being sold, and now they're moving to Vegas. And what are the chances of the missions getting a new stadium to keep them in San Antonio? With more on what's on Instant Replay, let's head over to Greg Simmons. Yeah, we don't want to lose another franchise. Right. Remember, we also lost the Stars as well to Vegas. And Bull Riding is back with a San Antonio Rodeo coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. How long have you been doing this? Uh, professionally, uh, this is my 15th year. Uh, but I've been doing it, you know, started out on calves whenever I was three years old and just worked my way up. Bull riding is back tonight. Our Jessica Hine highlights the competition that includes the defending San Antonio bull riding champion, J.W. Harris, part of her first experience with the San Antonio Rodeo. And while the rodeo's in town, the Rampage are on their own rodeo road trip. Just days following the announcement, they have been sold. They're moving to Las Vegas next season. Andrew Seeley sat down with the Rampage before they headed on out. The missions itself have a long history and important tradition in San Antonio, one of the uh, oldest uh, professional sports franchises in Texas. Now, what are the chances that San Antonio loses another sports franchise after the missions upgraded to a AAA club without a new stadium? The mayor will address that tonight. And this past week, it was National Signing Day where local high school athletes commit to the college of their choice. Our Andrew Seeley will be along to highlight their accomplishments and also will bring his coverage of the district showdowns in high school wrestling. All that plus, the Spurs are in a tailspin during their rodeo road trip, and the Central Catholic Buttons take the next step to their fifth state championship in soccer. Instant Replay is live, and it is next. You don't want to miss a minute of it. Not a second. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> sure. We'll be right back.